got this 2017 RAV4. It's a hybrid model, and we are going to be changing the engine side water pump on this today. You can see how easy it is to access. This is our water pump right here. It's got a small belt on there. I believe that belt is specifically just for the water pump. And underneath, there's a little weeping hole for uh, coolant to come out of when the pulley bearing starts to wear out and it will leak coolant out of there. If it has the factory Toyota pink coolant, once it's introduced to air, it will start to crust over. It's kind of nice actually because it seals it up a little bit instead of completely leaking out on you. But uh, we're going to be changing that today. Um, here's the This is our uh, water pump. There's the part number for you. And it's kind of expensive. You could probably shop around and find it. Uh, got a gasket there. There's not much to it. It's just a tiny little thing. It should be very easy to change. Okay. So it looks like we got five volts, I'm guessing. By the looks of things and uh we got our gasket now i did order a gasket separate so uh i'm trying to think i don't see another gasket in here so i want to say that toyota does not include the gasket with the pump i'm gonna say that because I, I ordered i told them to order the gasket separately and there it is it's kind of taped onto the bag there so I'm going to say if you need a gasket, order a gasket separately if you're getting the Toyota one. There is some available in the aftermarket world, but I will warn you they are expensive. You're like anywhere from four to $700 Canadian, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, the uh, Toyota one. The uh, price for that is $252.85. That's if you're in uh, Canada. And then the gasket, uh, actually, maybe it didn't bill me for the gasket. Maybe it does come with a gasket, I don't know. I was hoping to have that answer ready for you so that you don't have to go through that. Um, and then yeah, coolant should be costing you $22.80 per jug. I got two jugs. They are pre-diluted bottles, so you just have to pour them in. You don't have to mix them. And uh, it's the super long life stuff. Um, now, I recommend you get the Toyota stuff. That way you're not mixing in some aftermarket crap. The uh, OEM coolant works really, really well. That's what's uh, designed for. So first thing I'm gonna be doing, we need to get this belt off of here. So. I kind of want to just remove this, like unbolt it and move it out of the way so that we have like access to that. This air conditioning line's kind of in our way, but not really. It's nice, it's right there. There's nothing in the way. This is gonna be an amazing job to do. Uh, first thing we can kind of do is, if you open this tab a little bit, you pull it back, we can remove this uh, high power battery cable, power cable for our air conditioning compressor i believe it is i think it's got an electric compressor for the air conditioning which is crazy but that's what it is um then we've got a clip down here so we've just got two tabs that you push in i should get a light to show you but uh let's see if i can get that out of the way there you go you can see two little tabs on the side you push those in pull this thing out and now we need to get that belt off. So you can see the belt tensioners right here. And there's the, the nut that's cast into the housing of the belt tensioner. So we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a long wrench or ratchet, and we'll take that belt off. It's a 14, but it's kind of like loose on there. Okay, so I believe it's a 14 millimeter, which is typical of Toyota. It was just, a little bit sloppy, but that's okay. So we need to go, uh, you need to pull the wrench towards the, the front of the vehicle. And once we get that sort of off, 
There we go. I'm just going to uh, do that with the belt for now. I don't know if it's run in behind an accessory belt. So what I might do is just tuck this up to the side, maybe use like a coat hanger or something, just to like hold it there. Cause like I say, there'll probably be another belt in front of it on the crank pulley. I could be wrong, but that's just my guess. Um, now we need to uh, drain the cooling system. Now you could drain it just from the radiator. There's a screw on the rod that drains the coolant. Or you could just go ahead and start taking bolts out and let it just puke out, which is what I'm going to do because I'm being lazy. So before we do that, take our rad cap off. Always do this when the engine's cool. You don't want to drive it for two hours and then immediately take the cap off or there's going to be all this pressure in there and it's going to blow up in your face. So don't do that. Make sure the system's cool. Um, 12 millimeter bolts by the looks of things. Like I said, we got five of them. We can see the pattern of our pump here. This is what it looks like. Looks like tens to me. Are they tens? I'm gonna say they're twelves. Maybe they are tens. Okay, so they're uh, ten mil. Five of them. I'm just gonna start breaking them loose. Three of them you can get to real easy. I'm sure the other ones aren't that hard, but these are the three that I can just see right from the top here. I'm gonna grab another light to get some more light on this because it's like dark down there. So. So we've got another 10 mil that's kind of like down, hidden behind this uh, belt tensioner. So I think I can get to it. I just have to hold tension on the, uh, the belt tensioner. We may have to go through the wheel well for this one. Okay, so I was wrong about the belt. It's the only belt that's on the engine and it's only there for the water pump. So it does come off. You can get to that 10 mil bolt. All you have to do is just move that tensioner out of the way a little bit with your wrench, like as if you're taking the tension off of it. And then we can uh, get in there and uh, hopefully remove it. I'm gonna put a bucket underneath of this thing and I'm just going to start taking all the bolts out and the water pump's gonna fall off and puke all the coolant out. Just taking the bolts out carefully. Two up from here, oh, probably. Okay, there's one that's like right underneath. It's kind of towards the front, so very easy access. And you can see now we are starting to separate. So we're leaking now, which is good. I guess if you wanted to prevent a mess, you could undo the bottom ones first and then do the top ones so that you don't get cooling all over your hands. Uh, I just gotta loosen that other one off. That's gotta be the hardest one is the one that's right underneath the tensioner. Uh, it's really not that bad. You can take the tensioner out of the way if you wanted to. It looks like a uh, 12 mil bolt. As long as it doesn't uh, run into the body. All right, we're gonna cheat a little bit here and use this thing. I gotta try to situate myself so that I uh, can get this down and hopefully get this in. I don't know if I can or not. But we're gonna try. Yeah, ratchet's just too big. No. And there's not enough, uh, there's too much back drag in the ratchets, whether it's the actual ratchet or the ratcheting wrench. So those are useless. I can't physically turn it because it's too tight. My fingers are too slippery. It's in the way. You have to hold it. Yeah, everything's just in the way. My hands are all slippery, so like you can't fucking turn anything because the socket just slips in your fingers. 
Hold on. All right, so here's a little cheat code that I like to use sometimes. I use this double-sided tape. It's really thin stuff from uh, Frost King. They make like the uh, heat shrink window wraps that you can use at home to keep heat in in the wintertime. But they give you this double-sided tape that's really sticky, but it's really thin. And then I use emery cloth. It's like sandpaper if you don't know, but it's like really kind of gritty. And it works awesome for like, if you need to like grab a hold of your socket because your finger keeps slipping on your socket, it works freaking awesome. So we're gonna try that. This belt tensioner thing's uh, kind of shitty. Um, which hand was I using before? Was it this one? Like one underneath it here. Oh yeah. Uh, is that the right way? No. That's the right way. Yeah, so that works way better. Okay, now it should come off. Now, whether we can actually get this thing out without jacking up the engine, I don't know. Oh, we still got one more bolt in the bottom that I didn't take out. I hope to God this thing comes out without having to lift the engine. This is something you would do on like a Dodge where it's just like, Oh no, it doesn't come out. I think they would have uh, designed that a little better. It's unfortunate. Modern day problems. All right, well, okay. So I'm just sticking this underneath the oil pan. Just give it a little bit. See where that takes us. Same situation. Pretty close, but not quite. Okay, I'm just taking these um, motor mount bolts out. Now, I was gonna take this off, but these bolts are seized and they're gonna snap off. Unfortunately, they're rusted. And then we've got uh, one that's facing down. And it is uh, smaller than that. I believe it's a 14. Who are those guys on top? The ones on top are 17. Uh, my wrench is 14. <sighs>
Now, I'm hoping that uh, this is gonna gain us just enough room to get this thing out. I know that the motor mount sits on top of the engine mount side, and we're trying to bring the engine up, but I'm hoping that uh, just by taking these nuts and bolts off, it will give us enough flex to be able to get there like that. Yeah, so close, but just Okay, so we're gonna uh, try to take this thing out. I got pry bar on against the crankshaft. Did we go back down? No. All right, so I'm gonna take this shield off. I wanna take the motor mount bolts off. Actually, you know, I don't even have to do that. Uh, so there's two bolts, one here, one in here. And they appear to be both 17 millimeters. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to blind you there. Check that. Yep, 17 mil. So I'm just gonna take those two out and that should give me hopefully a little bit extra height to get that engine up. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try that. Okay. Amen. All right, now I'll get this out of the way. Pull this motor back in. I just need to loosen it off. We got one, two, three. The third one, thank God they put it on an angle so we can get to it. Okay, we'll see how high that thing goes now. Still gonna go higher. I think I have to take that mount right in. I just had a feeling that, you know, it was so close we were just able to like, we could just loosen it off if you get there, but I guess not. Oh, that'll do it right there. It just moved way over. Okay, there we go. So that's the trick. The steps include uh, removing the water pump bolts, removing, well, take the belt off, remove the water pump bolts, five of them, they're 10 mils. We got uh, the center front belt or uh, mount, and then uh, this side mount, 17 mil. And uh, yeah, then we can finally sneak it out of there. So I'm just using uh, a little bit of 320 grit emery cloth to just uh, get a little bit of this corrosion off where the uh, O-ring seals. We need to have a nice clean surface for this when we go to reassemble it. All right, now is the time to get some of these, uh, any of the coolant stains and stuff off. Sometimes there's chunks of coolant that form like that. You can see right there. Just uh, wipe all that off. I am now gonna use compressed air to just blow out these bolt holes. I don't want any coolant to be in them. Sometimes that'll happen and 
you tighten down a bolt really tight with coolant in the hole, there's a chance that you could fracture the aluminum and we don't want that. I know what you're thinking. Okay. I'm gonna try to sink this in here. Sounds like a campfire down there with that wood that's cracking. And now we can uh, put our bolts in. I guess you could like take the motor mounts out and jack it up, then take the bolts off and let it puke out. Like it might give you a little bit more room. It's just kind of like sketchy, you know, like if one of the, uh, if the jack would ever fail and your hand was down there and like got squished or something, that would suck. Oh, these flies are friggin' driving me up. So I'm just gonna like run these down. I'm not even gonna tighten them up. I still have the two bottom ones to do, but seeing as the engine is up like that, it actually brings the bottom closer to the body of the car. So I can't actually get my hand in there right now. So. We have to lower that back down. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I just wanted to get that water pump sort of like in there, you know? I'm just gonna put these bolts in, get them started for now. We'll tighten them down afterwards. Okay, these ones here, uh, I recommend tightening those down by hand just because of this aluminum. If you tighten it way too much with an impact gun, there's a good chance you'll either break a bolt, break a stud, or fracture the aluminum mount. That would really suck. So, uh, pro tip, get all those bolts started before you start tightening them down. Don't do one at a time. or you'll, There's a good chance one of your holes isn't going to line up, and then it just really sucks. you got to fight it, and then you might cross-thread them. So. I say that's probably good. That's as tight as I can put it. And I'll get my hand ratchet and check those ones. And we'll put the coolant bottle on. Yeah, so that's the way to do that one is literally just reach around underneath of the water pump if you can. You got to be like pretty flexible to do it, but it's the only way that's the easiest way that I've found besides going in from like the wheel well area. It might be easier to do it that way. how to tighten, tighten, tightening pattern. 
Yeah. yeah, I guess they're just like it's a water pump figured out. Okay, I just gotta feel that bottom one. Ten newton meters? Yep. Okay. Those are all tightened now. So now we need to put our belt on. Boom. Now's the time to uh, replace your belt if you want to replace it, obviously. And you gotta feed it down there around the crankshaft. See what the hell I'm doing. Off. Yeah, I can't uh, see there. I feel like we're caught on something. Shine it over on the crank for a second. Okay. Is that on? Looks good. Okay. Very good. That was a, a bit of a fight. So we did it. start these first. I hope these lined up. Beautiful. Oh yeah. There. 
Hello, Zarian. Uh, so, yeah, you can see I used like a big block of wood on the jack so that it didn't crush the oil pan in. So the oil pan's totally fine. It didn't hurt anything. You just have to make sure that you use something that's gonna take up this whole area. Um, yeah, you just have to really watch if you're gonna do that, right? So block wood, very important. It sounded like you paused on your Mario. All right, we're vacuum bleeding the system now, which uh, we use this little tool. If you haven't seen it before, it's pretty neat. Just gonna pull a vacuum on the system. And uh, you can see here, we wanna get it up to like 25. I like 25, that's pretty good. So we're sucking all the air out of the uh, cooling system so there's nothing in the cooling system. It's just a vacuum of nothing. So there we go, we're at 25. And then we take our pickup hose here and we stick it in our coolant and we open this up. And now it's going to uh, pull coolant into our cooling system, which is fantastic. Now, uh, the uh, cooling systems are separate. This is for your inverter on the hybrid system, completely separate, don't touch that. But this one's for the engine, which is important. We need that, so. Uh, we may run, no, oh, maybe not. I was gonna say slightly less amount of coolant, but it, maybe not. Probably wrong on that, so. That was a full four liter jug. I got another one. But obviously you can see our reservoir is full, but that's going to go down in a minute. So. And we just wait till our vacuum goes to zero, which means it's not sucking any more coolant into the system. And then what I'm going to do is we'll get this out of the way. We will start the vehicle and allow it to run. And I will keep the cap off of it. That way it can... Uh, we can purge some of the air and also top it up at the same time in case it uh, burps anything. The whole point of using this is that it gets all the air out and only fills the system with coolant, keeps all the air pockets that get trapped in the cooling system in high and low spots, takes all that out. So uh, we'll shut this thing off, get rid of all this stuff. I'm just gonna tidy this up and we'll fire this thing up. got it running the belt's not flying off on it so that's good I'm going to let it get up to uh, almost up to operating temperature I just want to run it for a little bit so that I can make sure that our cooling reservoir is perfect. And, uh, so in a minute here I'm gonna put the cap back on it and we'll just let it keep running now it may shut off because it's a hybrid. There is a maintenance mode that you can put it in and there'll be another video for that probably on YouTube, I would imagine, that will keep the engine running for as long as you want until you shut it off. But uh, I'm just gonna keep trying to keep the engine running, seal it up, let it get up to operating temperature, and then I'm gonna do a visual inspection on it and make sure it's not leaking anymore. And then I'll be confident that this repair has been a success. So, um, yeah, this one's a little bit different than the regular RAVs. The, the hybrid's different, so uh, hopefully this video helped. Sorry it's kind of long, we just didn't look at the manual, and the manual doesn't really tell you anything, so hopefully this helps. If you got any questions, throw them down in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.